Hello, it's Sue Ralph and I'm here today to share with you uh, a new kit by Indigo Blue which I'm very excited about and it's called the Indigo Blue Acrylic Paint Pouring Alchemy Kit. So this is the kit on the table and within it you can see you've got lots of goodies. There's some brilliant new paints and I was lucky enough to get three. Uh, Red Hot Chili, Kiwi and Sunshine. And then uh, that's the paints that you're going to be using for the pores. But you also get the white G So Good, which you can then use with the Go Flow, which is the magic solution to do your pores. Mix these two together. You have a bottle then that you can put your white in because you do use quite a lot of white. You then have the other solution, which gives you those brilliant cells that everybody seems to like and the paint pores. And this is called Cellulike. Then you also get a stack of cups. You get these white larger cups and you also get the little shot glasses which you can mix your paints up and as you can see I've already done that but I've been reusing them. And then you get these giant lolly sticks which are brilliant for mixing. And what I've done, I've taken a pair of scissors to mine and I've just chopped them in half because it means that they last you a lot longer. Plus when they're in the little cup like this you're not likely if they're smaller to knock the cup of paint over. So as I said, you get stacks of these and then you also get, for those of you that don't like to get too messy, because it is quite a messy craft, you get a stack of gloves. You also get three different sized canvases and you also get four of these little boards which I've actually painted mine with gesso because it helps to seal the surface so that when you do your pores, the paint just doesn't um, go straight into the wood. And then you also get a pipette because you will need to add some water when you're mixing up the paints. So, and oh sorry, almost forgot, you also get your trays so that you can do your paint pours in. And you also get an instruction sheet which will tell you what quantities to use how to mix it up so that you can do your very first pour. So I'm just going to very quickly show you one of the pours that I did on a canvas. So you can see I've got it in my tray and then I've got my little shot glasses here which have supported it so that the paint can drip off. And this is the type of thing that you can achieve using the paint pour. Now I don't know if you'll be able to capture, if I bring it up close enough, some of the different cells and the way that the colours all mix together. What we're going to do is we're going to have a go at making a smaller one on one of these little boards which I've already prepared and to save you time watching me put all the colours together, mix the colours together, I'm just going to mix one up because I've already got a stack here which I prepared last night. So let me just move some of this out of my way. So we want to start off with one of the small shot glasses and then we want to get our chosen paint and I'm going to mix the Kingfisher Blue, it's a metallic paint because I thought that would look rather nice. So what you want is you want a teaspoon or a tisp as I used to say to the children. Uh, you also get given these spoons so you want a tisp of paint. I'll pop that into my shot glass and then you want two teaspoons of the Go Flow. Oh and I, I didn't take this out because I wanted to show you but inside, inside the cap you have a little stopper which you'll need to remove before you get the, uh, the Go Flow out. So you just use a pair of scissors or Flick it out. Oh, there we go. And then pop it back on. And then you've got the Go Flow ready. Now, as you can see, you will be getting a full one. I've used mine quite a lot. Um, what you do, give it a shake. Make sure the top is screwed on tightly. Just give it a shake to start with. And then you unscrew the top. Okay. And then you want two teaspoons. And to be quite honest, once you've done this a few times, you will actually get to, to know how much you need instead of having to measure it out. But for the video today, I'm literally just going to show you. 
And there's one more. Okay. And then when you've got that, just make sure that you screw the top back down so that the air doesn't get to your go flow. And then just give it a mix. So I'm just going to get one of my little lolly sticks, scrape the paint off, make sure I don't waste anything. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that this is all mixed up really nicely. Excuse me a minute, I'll just wipe my hands. Make sure that the go flow and the paint are mixed up really well together. And as you can see, it's quite a thick consistency. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add some water. Now you can use just normal tap water, but if you do use um, a quantity like I've mixed up in my white bottle, it suggests that you use distilled water because then it will last you a lot longer. Um, it's something to do with the water. It hasn't got any nasties in it. So just a little drop of distilled water in and then just mix it around. And what you want to do, you want to get to the consistency of single cream. So you want it to, to drop off your lolly stick quite nicely, but also uh, you want it to flow across your board, your canvas, whatever you're using quite easily. That's still just a little bit thick. I'm using the bottle with a spout, but Kay has actually included a pipette. So, you know, if you want to, you can use just water in a little pot and just take up a few drops and add it. Okay, and just keep stirring until you get the consistency you want. Now, because I, I did actually mix paints up last night, but they could actually be a little bit too thick this morning. So I'm just gonna have to take the lids off and just double check them all and we'll see how we're going. All right, I think that's good to go now. Can you see how it's, it's running off quite nicely? There we are, so that's one. Right, so for this one, I'm going to use a cup. I'm going to put my paint into it and I'm going to bring it up to sort of almost like um, just over a quarter of the, the pot and that's going to make my dirty pour. Now a dirty pour um, is, is means that you're putting lots of different colour paints in together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with white, which I've already pre-mixed. And I'm just going to put a little drop of white in the bottom. Now, a lot of people recommend you don't need to put your cellulite uh, into the white paint. So that is just the go flow of white paint and a little drop of water. And then I think we'll go with... Let's go with the olive waistcoat, the hot chilli, coastal walk and sunshine. So I'm just going to double check all of these to make sure that they're still that single cream consistency. Got the sticks in here just to check. And I think they're pretty good actually. Yeah, so I think that's okay. Now, can you see that the the olive the olive waistcoat? Oh no, it might be alright. I thought it was a bit thick, but I think it'd be fine. And then let's have coastal walk. Okay, so that's the coastal walk, and then the sunshine yellow. Okay, so in here, this is one teaspoon of paint and two teaspoons of the Go Flow in each of these five colours now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cellulite, and again, you will find it has a little stopper just inside, which I've already taken out, which you just literally pull out. And then I'm going to put just two drops. You can put one to three drops. So I'm just gonna put two drops in I think two of the colours, so I'm going to put it into the sunshine yellow. So one, ooh, one, two, it's a bit of a drop that one. 
and then I put them in the red and again one two it does come out fairly quickly so just watch yourself you don't need to put too much in just give that a very quick stir you don't need to stir the celly like in too much if you keep the celly light to just a small a couple of small stirs hopefully you'll get the bigger cells if you stir it in too much you'll find that you'll get little tiny cells right so we've got some white in there already so I'm going to pour in just a little of the Kingfisher blue and then let's go with some yellow and I'm pouring it up from a distance so that hopefully it will mix quite nicely in the cup and keep going some of the red and then some of the olive green again then I think a little drop more white just on the top and you will find that because the white paint is a denser paint it will just sink to the bottom but that's not a problem so whichever color you put in first you usually get that one coming out on top uh, I think maybe just a little more uh, let's go with this one I love the Kingfisher let's pop some of this in here and you should find that this quantity is just right for this size of board just a little more okay so that's my dirty cup so I've got all my paints in there and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the board on top and I'm going to flip that over okay and that will give you your dirty cup flip pour now this is where the magic happens I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit make sure that you can see well let's get that in focus properly and now just leaving it just a, just a minute for it to all settle down and then I'm going to lift are you ready for this make sure you can see it nicely look at that all those colors now the one thing you do have to make sure is that whatever you're working on is a flat surface because you don't want the paint all just rushing off one end you want it to spread nicely all over so let's just turn that round a little bit I'm going to tilt very slightly just so that we can get those corners covered you don't want to do it too much because you don't want those cells to actually spread out too far you want to try and keep them together as much as you can now because this is such a small board you shouldn't have to worry too much about making sure that the paint goes into all the corners because that amount of paint should be enough but if it doesn't quite reach you can always help it by using a spatula or even one of the lolly sticks just to bring it out into the corners and to help it flow over the side and make sure that all those sides are covered now that doesn't look too bad at all so you see you've got lots of lovely cells in there so I don't think we need to use the um, I can't even think of the word of it now uh, the oh goodness me <laughs> I can't think of the name I'll show you we don't need to use this um, it's just like a, a kitchen burner oh do you know it's gone straight out of my head now but basically what you do is you use one of these and it helps to bring up the cells so it brings up the cellulite from underneath uh, from the white paint if it's buried under the white paint and it brings up the cells so that you get sort of more patterns coming up through the white and the other colours. I'll just show you what you can do is pop it on, just give it a quick blast over. Now I don't think anything else is happening there so I'm going to turn it off. 
You don't have to have one of these. You can actually use um, a heat tool as long as you get it nice and hot first of all and it's not one of those ones that really blast out uh, the sort of the air so that all your paint just disperses all off the side of your um, of your board or canvas. So that's what we've got. So that one is called a Dirty Pour Flip Cup. And I'll be back in just a few minutes. I was just looking at this canvas and I've decided that I'm just going to pick up some of the paint from around the side using my spatula. And I'm literally just going to cover in any white spaces I can see around the side, trying to use the same colour that has dripped over the sides. So just literally pick up some on your palette knife and just very gently just touch the sides. And that way it gives it a nicer finish so that when it's all dry, you can then go ahead and uh, give it a coat of varnish because it will bring those colors back. You will find that when this dries, you're going to lose that glossy finish that you can actually see at the moment because it's wet but once it dries you can give it a coat of um, varnish I tend to use uh, spray varnish or um, on the larger canvases I've done I've used one that you sort of paint on I, I do find the spray easier because you don't get any lines anyway so that is our dirty cup flip pour and now I'm going to show you how to do a swipe so I'll put that one out of the way, bring in another cup here, and I have a canvas that I've already gessoed. So I'm going to pop that on there. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the colour straight from the pot across, and then I'm going to use my wipe to swipe over the top to bring a swipe colour and um, different colours. So let's start off with some of the olive waistcoat. So I'm just going to have a line of paint, like so. Oops. Bring in some of the red hot chili. Go with the sunshine yellow all the way across. So you just want to bring out some different colours. Right, I'm going to pop in, I think, some Wimbury pie. See how what happens with that colour. And then let's go with uh, townhouse teal. Let's see what colours we get mixing these together. There's quite a lot of that one. I do like this colour. And let's pop in just one more. Let's just have some of the blue, coastal blue, just a little here. Just there. Okay, and I'm not worried about this end because what will happen is I'm going to put the white here and I'm going to swipe it across. So let's put a line of white. Okay, now this one is called a swipe. Oh, and you can see that for, for the white, what I've done is I've just put a little bit of blue tack on the top because it doesn't have a top to it and that just stops the air from getting to the paint. So I've got my spatula, or you could use um, a piece of plastic, a credit card, you know, the, the very sort of tough uh, packaging from some of the dyes that you can buy. Uh, it's anything that you can do just to swipe across. So here we go, let's see what happens. Just very gently, just let it slide across. Oh, can you see all those cells popping up now? I'm just going to wipe wipe that off so that I get a nice clean swipe. There we are. And if you don't like all the white, you can just 
bring it back again, swipe this way. Can you see all those great cells popping up now? I like a little bit of white in the middle there, but I'll just pull this just down here, I think. See what happens. There we go. And it's as easy as that. Kay has done all the hard work for you. She's put the solution together in the GoFlow. And then obviously it works with the indigo blue paints. Now I'm not sure how it would work with other paints. That's for you to, to sort of try out if you've got a stash of paint at home. But you know, this kit has been um, produced to work with the indigo blue paints. And then you have the cellulite, which is what helps you to make all those lovely cells. So I'll just bring this up to the camera for you to have a closer look. There we go. And there's lots of beautiful cells there. What I will do now is I will wait for these to dry. And once they have dry, I will take some photographs and I will leave photographs at the end of this video for you to have a look at. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I hope you have lots of fun. There's so many different things that you can do with this pour kit. And that's just something that I've done a little bit extra. I've done my pour and then I've used some of the indigo blue stencils just to sort of put a bit of dimension onto the top of the pour. Anyway, I shall be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.